Hey everybody, um, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about Bluetooth and LabVIEW. Um, so working with Bluetooth devices in LabVIEW, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, one of the really simple ways is to just use Visa. So Visa, if you never worked with it, is a way to abstract different ways you can communicate to devices. Um, it does support Bluetooth. Um, and a lot of times you can just use a Bluetooth to serial driver on your PC that will basically make your Bluetooth devices show up as a COM port. And then you can just read and write right from that COM port. Um, and it manages the transition. Um, there also is, um, so if I open up a block diagram and go to data communication and protocols, um, let's open this up. There is a Bluetooth section. So this has some different uh, Bluetooth functions. Um, they look very similar to like the TCP UDP functions. Um, but yeah, basically you can connect, you can create listeners. So if your device is basically the, the server in this case, you know, you can do that. There's discovery functions for, you know, finding um, nearby Bluetooth devices. So yeah, really pretty simple. Um, so yeah, you can use Visa or you can use the Bluetooth functions um, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, I've also gone ahead and put together a basically an API uh, for implementing both server and client. Um, and then this has some additional enhancements. So if you're talking to a Bluetooth device, so it could be some sort of sensor or some sort of you know, other device, it could be an Arduino, something like that. Um, this is a little different than your typical Bluetooth communications. Um, so yeah, use this, you know, with caution. If you have, if you're, it's an Arduino and you have control over the code, you can actually implement this pretty well. But if you're using some device, right, it could be a sensor, um, this API is probably not gonna work with it because it does some additional kind of handling to make sure uh, you know, the right amount of data is read and it also sends acknowledgements back and forth so that you know that certain data was received, etc. Um, but yeah, so um, I've basically gone ahead and created two classes. So I have a Bluetooth client and a Bluetooth server. Um, and in those uh, classes, there's just a couple functions, right? So for the server, there's a write data, wait on listener, start server, read data, close server. And then I've also added some properties so you can kind of read and write the UUID and the timeout through property nodes, or you can just drop these uh, functions down. Um, the client is similar, just a connect, close, read, write. Um, yeah, and I've also got some uh, examples showing how these work. Um, so you can implement a kind of custom uh, LabVIEW to LabVIEW Bluetooth communication this way um, and it has some additional checks that you don't get from just using Visa or using the uh, you know Bluetooth API so I'll show you that so on the server side there's this uh, discover nearby devices which is just calling this function here so we're just connect uh, basically listening um, so I can specify a timeout, so how long I want it to basically listen for, and then it's just going to return all of the devices that um, address and device name that are nearby. Um, so yeah, that can be called. Um, it's actually not part of the class, right? It's included in this uh, project, but um, yeah, and it's really just a wrapper around that basic function. Um, so here I'm actually instantiating my server class. And I'm using the property notes to set my UUID and my timeout. So um, it can be done through property notes um, through the start server. There's really not much going on here. We're just kind of setting all of those uh, properties. Um, and we're calling this create Bluetooth listener function, which really is just using the low level Bluetooth API. Um, not that it's that low level, really. It's still a big abstraction. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we're basically just uh, setting all of those details. Um, we can also set a name and a description for our server. Um, so there's really not a lot going on in these functions. Um, same thing for this wait. Basically, we're just waiting for a device to connect before we move on. So, and we can specify the timeout on that wait. Um, oops, 
Sweet. So now once we actually get to reading and writing data, this is where we start uh, making things just a little bit different. So in this example, we are just generating 50 random numbers and we're just typecasting that to a string. Um, in our write data, um, we're calling this uh, write Bluetooth data function. Um, and here's where we start veering from the typical um, uh, Bluetooth API. So we are using the Bluetooth API, but it's implemented some additional logic for you, so you don't have to worry about that so much. So first thing it does is it's going to take the data that you're writing, it's going to pull the length of that data, um, and then send that over. So it's first sending over, hey, this is how much data I'm sending. Um, second thing is it's going to write your actual data. Um, and then last, it's going to go wait for a confirmation to come back. So um, that way your uh, client will know exactly how much data they're, that you're sending. Um, so they make sure they get the right amount of data. Um, they get the actual data, and then it will send an acknowledgement back saying, yes, I got all your data. Um, so that way, you know, you have some additional checks in your Bluetooth to improve reliability, et cetera. Um, but yeah, that would be what a write looks like. Um, and yeah, our close is really nothing crazy either. Um, just a kind of close of the uh, Bluetooth, but also of our listener. So we're kind of closing both of those references out there. Um, so yeah, that would be our kind of server example. Um, you can implement, you know, whatever you want with that, really. Um, so let's look at the client now. Um, and in this case, right, the server is writing data and the client is reading. Um, it can be 100% bidirectional or the client could be the writer and the server could be the reader, etc. It really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, um, there's uh, property nodes here I've set where you can specify all of this information. So you can set the channel. Uh, the UUID of what you're connecting to, um, server address, etc. So basically, I can say, hey, this is where I'm connecting. Um, and yeah, you can kind of programmatically generate some of this information through listening as well. So I can, you know, listen for nearby devices, etc. Um, I can start my client, which is actually going to um, connect to my server. So it's going to use the Bluetooth connect function. Um, and once we've connected, we're just going to start reading data. Um, and again, this is where you start veering outside of the typical Bluetooth API. Um, so just like on the uh, writer side, we're writing, first thing we're writing is the amount of data we're writing. So this is going to read that data size so it knows exactly how much data to read. Um, it's going to then uh, input that into our bytes to read to read our actual data. So we're just reading exactly the amount of data that the server told us to read, um, which is right there. Um, and then we're also going to send this confirmation back, um, which is basically just the length of our message back saying, you know, you told us to read X amount of bytes. I did actually read X amount of bytes, um, which is our confirmation. So that's how it's sending that back to let it know that, hey, I got your data, everything's good. Um, sweet. Um, and that would be the read. And then, yeah, the close is pretty simple. It's just closing out the Bluetooth connection. So um, this is all, you know, set up so you can kind of create custom Bluetooth communications between systems. So these could be, uh, you know, it could be even be like PC to PC type stuff, right? You could be transferring data wireless that way. Um, you know, you can set up your Arduino to also, you know, if you have an Arduino with a Bluetooth module, it can communicate with this library as well. Um, you just need to set it up to uh, basically work the same way, right? Where it's saying, you know, hey, read my first four bytes. That's basically my length. Okay, then read X amount of bytes and then send back my acknowledgement. So pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that would basically be how you can implement some kind of custom Bluetooth. And there's additional functions as well in here for Bluetooth modes, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The basic example, though, is, right, um, I can do this. 
um, just trying to enhance Bluetooth communication reliability just a little bit. So not only can you, um, you know, connect to devices, but you can also get some, you know, make it a little easier to know how much data to read and get acknowledgements back when that data is read. So yeah, that would be the uh, my little Bluetooth API for both clients and servers. Um, and yeah, this is all free, open source. Um, the link to this repository is going to be in the description below if you want to download it, play with it, etc. Um, yeah, I've had good success with this, um, playing around with some Bluetooth. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, thank you guys for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.